today you're going to hear about the most pointless part-time job I've ever had. And this is a tough choice actually because I've, I've had a few. This is about when I lived in California and as a spoiler alert, I was a telepsychic for about one month. And here's how that went down. When I moved to California, the job market was terrible. It's a non-alcohol beer or an irony beer if you saw that, that other video. Job market was terrible. Teledyne Hughes, all the big Warbucks moved to Arizona. All those big contractors. I think it was like, it was the early 90s. It was like 9% unemployment. I, I'd moved to San Diego irresponsibly. So I, one of the, it, was, it was going back to being poor after a long time. You know, it was like being a student again, kind of. I'd always kind of been interested in, in self-help and maybe people who, you know, improvement as an individual and thus helping other people uh, improve themselves or, you know, help. I, I, you know, thought about being a doctor or a psychologist in my early days. So I, I, got, I got brought into this cult, actually. I'll call it a cult. And this is a whole another video um, of run by a hypnotherapist, this guy who was, who was a hypnotist, and he was running the, uh, like a school for hypnotherapy. And I, I became certified as a hypnotherapist, and, and I thought it was interesting. And then there was a launch of this 900, remember 900 numbers? Some of you younger folks won't. Uh, so 900 numbers, you know, you call up, pay some money, and, you know, speak with, with the hypnotherapist. And it, it was pretty, it, they, they had a pretty tight system. I, I, I thought, you know, I thought it was worthwhile. I thought people could get some short or maybe even medium term results out of uh, the program that they had working. And so um, that project, I was involved in the launch, like they launched it like one or two days of testing and it didn't work out and the project was scrapped. Well, I was left unsurprisingly unsatisfied. I feel so unsatisfied. And I, I kind of liked, you know, these these skills and this approach that I had and I and I thought, you know, there was a, an opportunity to help some people. I had this friend, this other friend, who was also peripherally involved with this cult. And he what was his nickname? Dragon or something like Dragon. Dragon. And he was a psychic. And he told me, he said, Hey Jim, you know, I know you're disappointed that this you know, this 900 number thing didn't take off and you didn't get to do your thing. He said, but I have another idea for you. He said, as you know, I'm a psychic. And actually, most of the, the, the majority of people who, who contact me, they're not looking for some supernatural reading or, uh, you know, what do I have in my back pocket or tell me how many dollars I have in my wallet. They're interested in, they have real life problems and they want insight how to solve those problems, how to cope with those problems. And he said, you know, I think, I think you could really do some, some good work on, you know, if you were on the, uh, one of these psychic hotlines. And I was, you know, on the surface, I was like, oh my God, really? He, he talked me into it and he, you know, had a card of, of a place I could contact. And so I, and I gave a call, I arranged an interview. And the way the system was, oh, that's getting nice. The way the system was, you had to have two inter phone interviews. Everything was over phone. You had to have two phone interviews. And then if you were successful, you would have like a system that you would log into during whatever your working hours were. For me, it was going to be at night. And you'd be like on call. If your phone rang after you logged in, that was a customer calling who wanted to speak to a telepsychic. I did my first interview and it was with the very first guy I was talking with. And, and listen, I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. I knew I wasn't psychic. And I didn't want to bullshit people into thinking I was thinking that I was psychic. So my thought was, well, you know, if I could get using the techniques and the skills I learned, you know, get focused in on a problem quickly and, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe make it sound a little mystical. You know, we can make this happen. So I, I had my first interview with with the guy who, who I called, you know, who was supposed to be the interview, just like, what's the job like? And then he says, well, you know, actually, I'm having a tough time with my girlfriend right now. How about you give me a reading right now? And I was like, oh, yeah. So 
<clears throat> all right, relationship problems. So I'm pulling all my, you know, my my relationship playbook out of the back of my mind and you know i'm trying to play through things with him trying to probe and see what's going on probably we made a, a little bit of, of of moving in a good direction however i definitely got the impression that he was not not satisfied not satisfied and he said uh okay well let's uh, schedule you for your second interview <laughs> or your second reading i don't know what that i forget what they called it so my second reading was a woman. My second interview reading was a woman. And I can't remember her name. She was really mystical, really out there. You know, I, I, I forget what the topic was with her. I don't remember at all. But I do remember I was reaching farther than, than I even had to reach with the other guy. At least with the other guy, I had like a concrete thing, relationships, and I had a lot of good, um, a lot of good material and instincts and uh, a lot of good rap about relationships i forget where her issue was i didn't i didn't i had nothing i had like nothing and then at the end of the of the interview reading she says to me she says well jim where where is it that you get this information from like where are you doing and i was like uh I, i'm channeling it from my higher self and she's like okay great so it was this really awkward hang up um, and I was like, oh God, I know this didn't happen. This was a disaster. I, you know, I was regretting, you know, even attempting this folly. And so time goes by, I'm waiting like for the final word of my acceptance or rejection. And it wasn't coming. I can't remember how much time went by, but I was getting kind of impatient. So of all people, maybe I couldn't get in touch with the guy, but for some reason I called the girl, the woman and <laughs> she answered the phone. She thought I was someone else. She was like, oh, White Cloud, I'm so happy to hear from you. <laughs> so she thought I was some psychic named White Cloud. White Cloud, is that you? I was like, oh, no, it's Jim. Oh. <laughs> the whole, you know, the, the whole energy, Jim. Oh, it's you. Well, you should, you know, really contact the network and they'll tell you, you know, your result. And I was like, oh, gosh, okay. Well. So I really thought I was done then. Surprisingly, a few days go by and I get my approval. So I buy my, my kit. You know, I, I get like a headset that I can wear. And, you know, I, I get my, my passcode numbers and everything. And so I would, I would log in at night and sit on my bed, you know, my back up in a comfortable position. And I would be ready, ready to go. Hi, I'm Kathy at Time Life Books. I have all my notes there for, for things that, you know, as, as references, if, if I needed a situation come up, something like that. Well, what a roller coaster. So I went, I went through, um, I, I think, I can't remember. I might have been active about a month. It might have been two weeks. And very, very mixed results. You know, there were a lot of people who at the end of the call, they're like, wow, you know, this really helped me. You know, thank you so much. You know, I got a lot out of it. That was great. And then there were others which were just a total nightmare for me. Like, you know, I'd get a call from, you know, a bunch of high school girls at a drinking party at night. You know, tell me something about Sally. What, what's Sally to... Oh, you mean the one who sleeps with all your boyfriends? Or, yeah, I don't know. I, it, 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 was, it was uncomfortable, right? But it's one of those things where, you know, in life where, you know, you see someone way, way out there stuck in some mud in a car or in, in a car or, or walking to a place where obviously they should never have thought that they could go. And you think, how the hell did they get all the way out there? It's one step at a time, just one small step at a time. And that's that's what happened to me. Right. I was just, you know, kind of convincing myself that this was one step at a time. And so, anyway, I'm, I'm struggling along with this. And, you know, I have some good moments, some great moments, some bad moments, some humiliating moments. And then one day, one evening, you know, I'm, I'm going to log into the network and I can't get in. I was like, huh, that's weird. And so the next day I, uh, I call the, the main office, whatever it was. And they said, oh, Jim, that's a funny thing. Uh, as it turns out, you failed both of your interviews and you were never supposed to be hired. <laughs> it was a mistake. And uh, yeah, you never should have been hired. We're, we're so sorry for the misunderstanding, but uh, 
just uh, just take your check and get up and go. <laughs> that was it. So that was it. That was the most pointless, weirdest part-time job that I ever had. I, I don't know if telepsychicking is a thing, but uh, apparently other people could do it. Obviously, I could not, and I tried to do a legitimate thing. After that, I, I lost interest in the, the counseling and hypnotherapy in general, uh, unfortunately. And that was just part of the crazy time of me living in California. I tell you, it was, it was definitely wild. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the story. Hope you enjoyed the time. Sagamigawa morning cigar, that's a rarity. I'll catch you on down the road.